We'll move into the uh, wide receivers, the top 10, the ESPN top 10 list, my top 10 list. Guys, I want to talk about guys on draft and guys I think you should be considering, um, all that stuff. I'm going to do a part two of, this, of the video just because this is already over 11 minutes. And uh, I know most people probably won't watch this one. Actually, no. I'm just going to do it all <coughs> in one video and hope I can keep it under 20 minutes. So first, let's get to the baseball. Tomorrow's almost a full day of games, but there's not a whole lot of great streaming options. It is Shohei Otani Day, though. However, so he will be a starting pitcher. So move him into your starting lineup, get him out of your utility spot, put a different hitter in there, get those pitcher points. Trevor Rogers is finally making a return for the Marlins. Um, so if you still have him, probably should start him. He'll be a little rusty. I'm sure he's going to be limited. He's probably going to be limited the rest of the season, but uh, he's still worthy of having of throwing out there. The streamers for you, Tyler Anderson, Mariners at the Diamondbacks. Diamondbacks are terrible. Tyler Anderson's having a career year. Even though he hasn't been overwhelmingly great, he's still probably the best streaming option for tomorrow. And Nestor Cortez of the Yankees against the Orioles. Again, the Orioles are terrible. The Yankees are good. Nestor Cortez, in his limited showings, has looked pretty pretty decent. Uh, his last start wasn't great, but there's no reason he won't bounce back against the Orioles. So the baseball stuff's out of the way. Let's get to the wide receivers. ESPN's top 10 list. Here it is. Devontae Adams, 1. Tyreek Hill, 2. Stephon Diggs, 3. DeAndre Hopkins, 4. Calvin Ridley, 5. DK Metcalf, 6. AJ Brown, 7. Keenan Allen, 8. Jordan, Jordan, Justin Jefferson, 9. I cannot believe I just misspoke the Wonder Kid, Viking Wonder Kid's name. Forgive me, God. I did not mean to be so blasphemous. And Terry McLaurin at 10. Here's my top 10 list. And you're going to notice some omissions, and we'll talk about that. My top 10 list. I got Stefan Diggs at one. He was number one last year. Stefan Diggs is my boy. As you can see, I see no reason why he won't be number one again. Tyreek Hill at two. You know, I just Ty Tyreek Hill is just so dynamic. He's the one guy ever, really, I can think of. Maybe Randy Moss when he was young, who doesn't need volume on uh, week to week to be a top five wide receiver every game. The guy just go off with one play so uh Devonta adams a three i just think i just think i i have nothing against Devonta adams he's very talented um i just think uh last year i i just can't see him topping last year i see Diggs and hill being you know relatively the same Devonta adams is gonna tail off a little bit not much but a little bit i don't have him as number one he's still top three though Four, we got DeAndre Hopkins. He's going to definitely have a better year in the second year in that system. And there's no, no Larry Fitzgerald. He hasn't officially retired. But last I heard, he has no desire to play at this point in the season. Maybe he'll return later. But for now, DeAndre Hopkins should see a lot of volume. Five, I got DK Metcalf. I, I really, I think this is the year DK Metcalf solidifies himself as a top five wide receiver. Now that Julio is, is not, uh, Julio's still around. But he's in a different situation. Things could change for him. We'll talk about that later. DK Metcalf, this is his time to move into the top five. Keenan Allen, I'm really, I love Keenan Allen. He's always been one of my favorites. I loved him in Cal, college when he was at Cal. Uh, I just think Keenan Allen, just excellent floor when healthy. Ceiling, <sighs> there's not much of a ceiling there because he doesn't score a lot of the touchdowns. But he's very good. I got him a six. Seven, I'm going Calvin Ridley. I'm not the biggest Calvin Ridley fan, I'll admit that, but it is the same quarterback, same franchise that uh, just sustained Julio Jones to a yearly top five finish, despite inconsistency in double teams every year. I don't see Ridley's situation being a whole lot different from Julio Jones. So yes, there may be some game to game inconsistency, but I think overall, He's going to, to uh, provide value or provide uh, production S similar to where you're drafting him. The expectation of what you're getting when you, of what you're drafting him for. At eight, I got Allen Robinson. I don't know why Allen Robinson gets disrespected every single year. But he has never not been a top 10 wide receiver when healthy, despite having shitty quarterbacks throwing the ball to him every year. This year <laughs> won't be any different. Andy Dalton sucks. Uh, Justin Fields potentially could be good. I'm not a Justin Fields believer. Um, but Fields has has a, a, more a more dynamic feel to him 
at least, than any quarterback the Bears have had in a very, 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 very long time. So potential for Allen Robinson, massive. Again, top 10 floor, top 5 ceiling. He's also looking for a contract. I mentioned this in a previous video. Allen Robinson is looking for a contract. He's not happy with this situation in Chicago. Um, he was looking for uh, um, a longer deal. Chicago gave him a one-year deal. I just think Allen Robinson is going to go off. And I personally think he's going to be a top five receiver this year. But um, pre-draft, got him outside the top five. Nine, Jordan Jefferson. God, I did it again. Are you kidding me? Justin Jefferson. It's pretty similar to ESPN, though. I think Justin Jefferson snuck up on people last year. I think um, he's not going to have as amazing a season as many believe. Uh, but I've been wrong on him before. I didn't think he was going to be that good last year. Again, <laughs> I did not mean to be blasphemous. Um, I just wasn't a believer on it, on it, of him coming into the draft, coming into the league. He made a believer of me very quickly, though. Uh, ate my words. Um, ate my crow. Love that Justin Jefferson is on my team now. Love his potential. Love what he's going to provide the Vikings fans for the next decade. Hope he can bring us a Super Bowl. My God, I hope he can bring us a Super Bowl. But, um, yeah, I'm not... Even though I'm a huge Vikings fan, everybody knows this, uh, I'm not as high on Justin Jefferson as maybe many other people are. Um, it's more of a realist. Adam Thielen's still around. Kirk Cousins is still around. Mike Zimmer's still around. <sighs> and defenses are going to adjust to Jordan Jefferson. Oh, my God. What is wrong? Jordan Jefferson is a quarterback at LSU who does not play in the NFL anymore. Justin Jefferson. I'm like, what is going on here? Justin Jefferson. Justin Jefferson. Justin Jefferson. Okay, and at 10, a little bit of a surprise, I got DJ Moore of the Panthers. Uh, he's proven that he can be a top 10 wide receiver before. I think second year in Joe Brady's system, I think they're going to go back to um, what made DJ Moore so successful two years ago, less what he did last year, having Christian McCaffrey back um, instead of the Panthers being in tank mode and shutting him down for the last half of the season is going to help him. Also, um, Sam Darnold. I, I do kind of think Sam Darnold is going to, is going to look good in this offense with these weapons that he has. The Jets never gave him weapons, so having weapons will be good for him. That's my top ten. So, um, why do I not have AJ Brown in there? Honestly, I'm going to give you Miles' opinion. I think Julio's the best wide receiver the Titans have. I think Julio's still going to be the number one wide receiver, uh, even at this stage of his career, even a new offense. AJ Brown is going to take a tumble. Julio Jones going to be the number one guy, and he's going to be fringe top ten. Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas burned Saul a lot of us last year. I get the hate. He's going to be out for the first six weeks. There's some rumors he could be out the whole season. He doesn't want to be in New Orleans anymore, blah, blah, blah. I don't know why they don't just trade him to Chicago for Allen Robinson, because the Bears don't want Allen Robinson either. Um, but whatever. I think the Saints would pay, would pay Allen Robinson, right? But, yeah, Michael Thomas, you're not drafting him as a wide receiver one this year. You're drafting him as a wide receiver three, wide receiver four. Definitely worth the risk because he we've seen what he can do when he's healthy. He's a top 10 wide receiver. So that's huge upside and minimal risk, huge upside. If you're not drafting Michael Thomas, why are you drafting? Brandon Ayuk, Debo Samuel, who knows really how that split is going to play out. They're both talented. They're both good. But how sustainable is the San Francisco passing offense after George Kittle? going to be we'll see i'm betting on debo samuel far more than brandon Ayuk, but i'm not denying that they're both talented they both will have some value kenny galladay is another guy there's not a lot of guys outside the top 10 who i foresee having uh top 10 potential this year uh, kenny galladay is one of the very few i do if he plays all six all 17 games which is looking doubtful uh he definitely could be a top 10 wide receiver by the end of the year Saints wide receivers, Marquez Callaway, Trent Cohen Smith. I, I think Marquez Callaway has proven already in, in just a couple of preseason games that he's better than Trent Cohen Smith. Smith has had many, many years to prove that he's worth something. Hasn't done it yet. I wouldn't bank on this being the year either. Uh, put your money on Marquez Callaway. And lastly, the guy I want to talk about is Mechel Hardman. He's getting massively disrespected in drafts. I think. He's going to have a huge breakout year. He's the clear number two in, in Kansas City. Um, I mean, he's one. God forbid something happens to Tyreek Hill. 
But he's one injury to Tyreek Hill away from being a top 10 wide receiver. So um, he's someone we should definitely be drafting a little bit higher than we are, right? <clears throat> Man, I didn't keep it on 20 minutes. This video is probably going to take 14 hours to post. But uh, I'm going to get to it. I'm going to finish it off here. A few guys who I really like who are not even getting drafted. Right now, Randall Cobb. Love the Packers. I hate the Packers. On the record, I hate the Packers. But uh, Aaron Rodgers wanted him back for a very specific reason. Aaron Rodgers got <laughs> Cobb back. So I think the Cobb is not going to have a career year. He's not going to be the Cobb he was 10 years ago with Green Bay. But he's going to be a very ownable wide receiver asset that is going undrafted. For the Lions, two guys. Tyrell Williams is, the, is going to be the de facto number one out there in Detroit, which it may be a bad offense, maybe a run-heavy offense, which, by the way, you should probably get shares in DeAndre Swift. But Tyra Williams is going to be the number one wide receiver in that offense. That volume alone should keep him in the conversation as being uh, a weekly flex consideration. And Amon Ross St. Brown, uh, since draft day, I've had him pegged as the next step on dates. He's going to be a mid-round wide receiver who uh, becomes the number one guy in his offense. By the end of the year, um, and with the, the Lions cutting Brashad Perriman, I think they, it shows they have a lot of faith in Amon Ross St. Brown, and Amon Ross St. Brown is a guy who we should be looking at at the end of the draft. And lastly, another rookie, Rondell Moore of the Cardinals. That's a very high-octane Cardinals offense, potentially. I don't believe in A.J. Green. Um, they're going to they're gonna pass the ball a lot. They don't have the best running backs. Kyler Murray is looking to have a huge year. Cardinals looking to get in the playoffs. Rondell Moore, incredibly talented. First round talent when healthy. Problem is, he's not healthy very often, and he's kind of small. But he has Tyreek Hill potential. Rondell Moore is a guy, another guy. Excuse me, I don't know why I'm talking so fast, like I'm out of breath and stuff. Um, yeah, Rondell Moore, another guy we should be considering at the end of the draft. So that's the wide receivers. <sighs> I really hope this video doesn't take two days to post. Peace, love, and nacho fries, my friends. Thanks for watching.